shy. So that, back there. Uh, so what, what is your take on steroids? You, like, you don't give a side kind of... Is this an hour and 45 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so we should only say at the end, like, if you're for it or, or against it. Yeah, I think that that's part of the point, is uh, that I, I want you guys to make your own decisions about it, you know, about what you think about it. You know, I have um, my own... You know, my own personal opinion is kind of the same as it was in the in the beginning. You know, I, I'm not somebody who competes at a top level, so for me to take steroids, is, you know, doesn't really make sense for me as a as a filmmaker. It doesn't help me. Maybe Adderall or some <laughs> other drug that would that would help me as a filmmaker. Um, but you know, uh, it just doesn't make sense for me right now personally. Um, how do I feel about it in sports? I think that. It can be used safely. I, I, I think that it will be, you know, part of the future will be people kind of opening up to it because it is um, hormone replacement therapy is, is now very widely accepted and you see commercials all the time for what they call low T, which means low testosterone. So you're going to just see it really open up wide, you know, among um, men using testosterone. And how can you tell a guy that, they, that it's okay to use testosterone, you know, over the age of 40 because you have low testosterone levels and discriminate against the guys that play Major League Baseball, you know, because of their job, you know, so we can't discriminate because they play Major League Baseball because they're on the police force or because they're in the military, you know, it's, it's going to just become something that's, that's more widespread. As the drug companies start making more money and figuring out ways to make more money, steroids will become more accepted. And that's the reason why testosterone hasn't become accepted is because it's been, you know, a drug since 1933 that's been on the market. It's never been pulled off the market because, you know, because of any sort of safety issues. Um, but it's been generic forever and it's really cheap. So they figured out ways to make money by making it patches and other things. Anybody else? Good. Uh, like, uh, based on your research, how did you start, like, how, like, what questions to start off with for your research, and was most of your research just interviews, or did you do surveys, and, like, depending? Oh, uh, uh, we had a lot of research, actually. We had, um, some full-time staff in the office that were, um, you know, just, uh, I hired a couple of, um, interns and a couple of actual full-time researchers that were, uh, a medical researcher and one researcher who was just, like, a girl that, had just graduated from Harvard and was like a speed reader, seriously. And uh, what I would do is I would hand her a book on like Lawrence Taylor and be like, read this whole entire book on Lawrence Taylor and tell me every single event that happened in his life and was there anything related to steroids. And she'd zip through it and give me like a two page outline of, you know, the Lawrence Taylor book. And then I'd hand her a Carl Lewis book and I'd hand her, you know, just all these different books. And so that was very instrumental was like having sort of, you know, when I, when I started this film, actually, was, uh, like, five years ago. And when I first started the film, uh, we didn't have things like Wikipedia was just popping up, YouTube was just popping up. So, I mean, now the, the tools are getting easier and easier to make, you know, documentary films. Uh, it, it would be so easy nowadays to be able to pull a lot of these, a lot of this footage from YouTube and not to use it in the film, necessarily, but just to see how it even cuts together. But what we had to do is actually go to, um, the, you know, ABC News sources and, and get the footage and, and pay a lot of money to make the movie, which you guys have a lot of these tools at your disposal. So if you're crafty and, and think and use Wikipedia, you know, YouTube and a million other apps and different things that you can use to find information nowadays, it's out there. You just got to be able to back it up. And that's the one thing, you know, about a documentary is, like, in the end, you have to back it up. And just really quick, the one thing that we did was uh, that it's really easy when you, if you want to start to make a documentary, just buy uh, index cards. And buy index cards in, like, three different colors, person, place, things, you know, different, zips, well, however you want to divide them up. But just start writing um, subjects on in index cards. Like, if you wanted to do it on the San Francisco Giants and the history of San Francisco Giants, you know, one card would say Barry Bonds, you know, boom. And another card would have, you know, another player's name and a coach's name and whatever. And, and you'd, you'd build your film out that way, you know. Where's the history of the team? Would, where did they start? You know, things like that. So if you want to make a documentary, I, 
I recommend index cards and bulletin boards in the old school way as well as combining with kind of the newer technologies that are out. So with all that, uh, how long did it take you to make the film? Uh, in total, it took from the inception of the idea until the very end uh, at Sundance was, was three years exactly, you know, and basically a lot of that time was spent, um, you know, just letting the story evolve and letting uh, things evolve. Um, it wasn't any, uh, when we set out, we set out to make it in a year, and it was just kind of an impossible goal. I think if you're going to make a documentary, you should just in your mind give yourself some time because it's going to take a lot of time to, uh, a lot more time to do it than you think. Okay. Did you come across any um, steroid or performance dancing drug use in boxing? I mm -hmm. the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, it's in every sport, really. You know, I, I, there's definitely some, you know, cases that, that came up in boxing. I mean, you know, uh, oh, surprisingly, none specifically, like, surrounding Mike Tyson, I think, it's always like the lesser of two evils. It's like when you bite somebody's ear off. It's like who cares if you did, you know, steroids or not. You know, so you know if you end up in prison for rape, it's like who cares if you did steroids or not at that point. So I think like, um, you know, around Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, there is a circle of drugs or you know drug stories related around him because he trained with uh, Lee Haney, who was Mr. Olympia and pro bodybuilders and different things. But there's no like conclusive evidence, you know, and the movie re wasn't really about uh, pinning down one thing on, on one person, it was more about trying to, like, discuss the issue, you know, as a whole.